Hi guys, uh, this is Amelia Duval again, financial guru. Listen, I'm going to tell you the quickest way to increase your wealth. Um, quick way at it, read. Read a lot of books. I'm going to give you all the books that I read. Net worth, the net worth workout. Now discover your strength. Go put your strength to work. Blueprint to billions. What got me here won't keep you here. What got you here won't keep you there. So you have to read this one. This was a great one. And then this was the best one. First break all the rules. This stack of books made me a great deal of love. Uh, I read, I invested in myself, I put uh, a lot of work and effort in every planning of how to maneuver this life. Uh, I understood that money has a beginning, it has a middle, and it has an end. It has a, a pattern. And once you learn the patterns of it, you're going to become wealthy. First thing I did, I invested in real estate. I bought my first home. I must have been 21 years old. First home. Best investment. Didn't know it was going to be lucrative for me. Didn't know it was going to catapult me into this, this life that I have right now. Second thing, I put 20% of my income away every year. Every year for 27 years. 20% of my income straight into a saving 401k IRA thrift plan anything just 20 percent of your income that's going to make you an amazing wealth um three i tried not to spend money on foolishness um i tried to always be mindful of my money know where it was going how it was going to produce for me what i wanted to do with it how i was going to do my bills i kept a record journal on every transaction that I made from my checking account. Um, of course, I'm going to make some mistakes. I'm going to I'm going to buy some things that I shouldn't have bought. But for the most part, I stayed focused on my goals. I knew exactly where I wanted to be. I knew that this age, I wanted to be sitting on this beautiful behind of mine right now. I knew it was coming. I knew I'd done everything right. I knew I had a plan. I stuck to the plan. So A, you first have to have a plan. Once you have a plan, you have to activate your plan. You have to stay on your plan and you have to go out there and get it. Uh, props out to my dad. We did a lot of real estate sales together. My dad is a contractor. So guys, as a contractor, my dad would push me into, we would buy property and we would flip them. This was the 90s, guys. 1992, 93. I was very young. I was selling real estate at the time. And I just made a ridiculous wealth with my old man. So my dad, great props out to you, James Gillard. I can't thank you enough. I'm sitting on my behind because you and I got up early, we went to bed late, we hammered on stuff and you were my go-to. You and my mom, my mom both, just was ready to help me do some things and make this amazing life that I have right now. So I owe these two people a great deal of gratitude. Uh, I opened up a restaurant about, I guess it was 2004. And my mom and I, she was in there working in that restaurant with me. My mom was just absolutely phenomenal. At that time, I was working three jobs, guys. I was working real estate. I was working for United Postal Service full-time. And I owned a business downtown restaurant full-time. Me and my mom were phenomenal together. We went in that, rec in that place. I mean, we were up at like 5 o'clock in the morning every morning. We were at Sam's by 6. Sam's would open the door and me and her be the first two people going through that door. We would have coffee and danishes. And it was just like my mom was just such a wonderful, you know, 
person to help me out because she knew I was struggling. She knew I had this restaurant. She wanted to be successful. My mother's always worked in, in restaurants. So she was just so proudful that she had a restaurant. And I said, this is all yours, lady. I'm going to let you run it however you want. And she did an amazing job. So all props out to my mother for that. It was just not the job that I wanted. So when I sold that restaurant, uh, my mother was just so uh, hurt because she didn't really want to get out of retail. She loved selling. She loved being an owner of a restaurant. She loved just being in that field. And I give her all the props. Thanks, Mom, for that six months or a year that you helped me keep that restaurant afloat. I can't thank you enough. Okay, uh, second thing I did was... Um, I did tax auctions. I uh, got a property to do a tax auction. I paid $475. My bro Let me tell you the story. My little brother, oh God bless him, he would fight with me to come and do a tax auction. No, you come with me. Let's do a tax auction. Let's do a tax auction. Let's just put some money out there. So we did. And I, I mean, we put maybe five or $6,000 in tax sale. We bought a whole bunch of different kinds of properties. And those little tax auctions, you think those things really don't work. People always pay the taxes. You just get like a residue for having your money held up. You get like some money, maybe $30, $40 on your, you get the interest on your money, but it was nothing a major. So we got, we sold, we bought about seven properties, guys. And out of those seven properties, every month for the year that we were waiting for the properties to, you know, to do whatever it's going to do, we would get check. I would get checks back and I just start marking off the checks. I'd be like, okay, I'm done. I got this check back. We're good. And I, I was marking off all the list of checks that, you know, we wrote out for all these different properties. And I remember calling on Orangeburg County, like, um, uh, like in January, I'm, I'm getting pissed off when Orangeburg County, I'm calling a lady. I said, listen, uh, ma'am, I said, you still have my check. You hadn't sent my check. And it was like, I bid on a property for $475. So I'm like, you still have my $475. I want my money. And this woman had to tell my crazy ass that I had bought, I had owned the property. She said, ma'am, uh, you own the property now. And I'm like, I really own the property? She said, you own the property. Didn't realize that my these people had not paid the taxes on the property and now I'm the proud owner of an a, a acre and a half of land and it, I inherited a mobile home on it. So I was like, oh my God, $475, best investment I ever made. It is now bringing about, I don't know, almost $400 a month every month. It was a two bedroom trailer. Me and my dad dug out this trailer. We were just pulling out all this weed and stuff. And behind all of this weed and trees and debris was a 1978 Continental mobile home. It was in great condition. It was just covered by weeds. We went in and dug it out and there lie my little pot of gold. So a year and a day. $475 later, I have a wonderful mobile home. I have a wonderful tenant that lives in it. She sends $400 a month, every month, religiously. $475 investment. I may have put maybe about $6,000 into that mobile home to bring it up to par. Once I bring it up to par, it is grossing me about $6,000 a year. So again, you just have to be out there. You have to think about what you want, what your plans are, how to make this money, make more money for you, how to make it grow and develop. I got on that plan. Once I read these books, once I understood how money operates, then my whole life got easier, guys. My whole world became a much wider landscape. So here I am telling you that you have to focus in on your money. You have to know where your money's going, know where you're throwing money, where it's not making you any money. You got to know what you want. You have to go out there and do it. And you have to be mindful of doing the right thing, having a good relationship with your your um uh, bankers, the loan officers, just having a good relationship with everyone that you meet. If you have a positive moral standard that is high, 
you're going to have a better chance at everything in your life. Your whole life is going to be better. My whole life was better when I stopped pissing around with drama and just stuff that was not getting me where I wanted to be. Once I started realizing that every problem that I had was always starting with me and I had to see what I was, see what I was not and not worry about it. I just had to say, hey, Amelia, stay focused on the goal. You have a plan. You want to sit on your ass at 47. You need to stick to the plan. When the rest of my people were out there partying and, you know, throwing the money away, I was diligent little freaking saver, guys. I didn't play those games. I didn't give those people my money. I didn't, I didn't throw my money away. When my banker neighbor was telling me what to do, I was listening. And I took full advantage of everything they told me. I listened because wealthy people want to help you be wealthy too. I want to have someone to have lunch with. I want to have someone to play tennis with. I want to have someone to go and have coffee with every day. So guess what? The richer I make my people, the more I have all this love around me, guys. And I love making people a lot of money. So if you're interested in how to make a lot of money, you've got the right person here. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to show you that a lot of money is always available for you. But again, people just tell you a whole bunch of other stuff. They say, oh, you should buy a new car. Oh, you should do this. You should do Trust me, guys. If you stop believing in the bullshit and start finding people like myself who has made a ridiculous lot of mo uh, amount of money and follow their little breadcrumb trail, you too will be sitting on your ass at 40 some odd years old when the rest of the world is clocking and moving and pissing about being in traffic. You're not going to have any of those problems because you're going to be sitting at home saying, well, I guess I'll have some coffee at Starbucks and I'll go here today or I'll do this tomorrow. This is the life. This is when you get the best out of 86.4. Anytime you can put your best out of your life and know where you want to go and know what you're going to do, this is what you got to look forward to. I am loving being here. I'm loving having this conversation with you. I'm loving that you're like going to subscribe to my channel. You're going to buy my t-shirt that says 86.4 on it. Getting the best out of it. Trust me. I don't let this 86.4 lead. I, I am leading the 86.4 dollars. I am motivated to be better every day. Not just a bullshit plan I'm telling you. I'm sitting on my ass right now loving my life so if you want to be a part of this comment ask me questions send me some um, emails just be, know that I am interested in helping you I am the same person you can be this person tomorrow all you got to do is follow the plan you've got to read the book you got to understand that the most important card in your arsenal of cards or credit cards is a library card that card is going to make you a ridiculous well read comprehend understand what it's telling you to do and follow the rules what is it first break all the rules follow the rules this is me signing off Thanks, guys.